Hello, everybody. So today I just want to briefly discuss IMSS and the brand of HIMS uh, because HIMS does not take insurance, which means that since it doesn't take insurance, it has to earn its business. It has to relate with a consumer because uh, the consumer is going to pay for HIMS, right? It's not like you are in network with an insurance and you kind of have the, the built-in demand from taking insurance from that insurance network. Um, HIMS typically focuses on issues that are not covered by most insurance companies. HIMSS focuses on issues that happen perhaps earlier in life, before people even have health insurance or be, before people are willing to go through the hoops and get a primary doctor and get a referral and go to a pharmacy, right? HIMSS sells convenience and the cost of that convenience often means that you have to go out of pocket instead of using insurance. But in order to do that, in order to gain customers and to create this new demand, because this is fully new demand that is created for healthcare. I think it's something fully new that people accept to pay for healthcare outside of insurance reimbursements. To do that, HIMSS has to create a brand, a compelling brand. And so, you know, one of the questions that I ask is, what is a brand? Well, you have hundreds of different marketing people who have hundreds of different views as to what a brand, but a brand to be compelling, you have to stand for something. A brand makes you stand out in the marketplace. A brand differentiates you. People develop emotional connection to brands. We love brands. That's like the whole point of why we are sad, for example, when a business dies or when a brand dies. You know, you still have people that are upset that Sears is dead in the U.S. Uh, Toys R Us. Toys R Us was a big deal. If you remember in the U.S. when Toys R Us went out of business, people were sad that Toys R Us died because they had an emotional connection with the brand. That's what brands need to stand for, you know. And when you think about some of the most valuable brands today, I could have put Amazon in there, but if you think about people's obsession with, say, Amazon, Tesla, or Apple, that's because people love the brand. And um, if you look at examples, for example, of brands and what they stand for and what brand personality is like, here's something that you can pause on in the video. You, you can see different brands stand for different things. And so I would put him more somewhere around either the, the Rebel brand or I, I, either the, the Explorer brand. Hims is more like a, a trailblazing brand, like a new type of brand. But you clearly have brands that are more about authority, brands that are more about creativity, brands that are more about everybody, uh, brands that are more fun. I would put him somewhere in fun as well. Uh, brand personality is a thing. Hims is trying to develop a brand with a clear personality where a lot of Gen Z and a lot of millennials are going to relate to that brand and they may not relate to the current brands in the healthcare space. I believe that for Hims, creating that brand in healthcare is like swimming in a blue ocean, right? There's, there's, no, there's, there, there's no bleeding profits, right? There's no serious competition. I can't think of a serious brand in healthcare. Unlike, say, for example, what if you tried to create a clothing brand? brand, right? It's competition galore. There's hundreds of clothing brands. There are a diamond dozen. It's tough. It's a red ocean. You compete. Creating a healthcare brand, like a real consumer brand, you have very little competition. And most of the competition is emergent. You don't have an established player out there. And the reason why I say that is because I'll ask you this question is, how do these brands make you feel, right? Uh, do you love these brands as much as, I say, hap Apple iPhone? If you, Apple to, if you happen to be one, one of the, out of two, one out of two American owns an iPhone, if you happen to be that, do you love your iPhone as much as you love, for example, a brand like uh, uh, the maker of Viagra, for example, which, which you, uh, you know, you have a branding on the pill, but I'm not sure... I'm not. I'm not sure people have an emotional connection with, with, with that product like they do with their iPhone or with their Tesla or with Amazon. Like people love Amazon. They're like, oh, get it on Amazon. Anyways, uh, say, same is true for for uh, for example the. The insurance network, right? Blue Cross, Blue Shield. Well, you know, I'm I'm sure it's very clever and it's a nice tagline and it's a nice logo, but I'm I'm not sure people have an emotional connection to Blue Cross Blue Shield or United Healthcare or GlaxoSmithKline if you go in the drug manufacturing space or a health system, right? Anywhere you live in the US, like near me, it's Baylor, Scott and White. What does Baylor, Scott and White mean to me? Really, really, really not, not, not much. You can see that these, these, these are companies that are that have grown through through conglomerates. You know, 
most current healthcare brands are simply the names of conglomerate and you take a few a, f a few names and, and you put them together and you call it call it united like united airlines did right for example in the us like many brands go like that they, they there was really no deliberate attempt at creating a brand you know Hims, for example, Hims, you've had an attempt at creating something that sounds fun and, and funny. And like, why do you have an S after Hims and hers? That's that's funny. Like GlaxoSmithKline, I'm not, I'm, you know, it's, ju it's just someone's name. Um, anyways, uh, there's no deliberate attempt at creating a brand in a lot of legacy healthcare. And why would you, right? You don't have to. Because most of legacy healthcare is about that rent seeking, that rent seeking that compounds to uh, enormous enormous companies, right? Companies that are very, very, very big, that keep merging and merging and merging. And so you keep adding name of health systems to an either, either being a company, you have inorganic growth done through mergers. And these mergers happen, why? Because most um, most of healthcare until today, like until, say, the past less than 20 years, I'm going to call it the past 15 years, and Teladoc was a pioneer in that, I just want to say. But anyways, in the last 15 years, uh, before that, it was all about your location. You had to drive to the doctor. You had to drive to see the doctor, right? So Moat was based on physical location, and you weren't going to drive two hours away to go see another health system because it wouldn't make any sense, um, back back in the day of, of fully analog interactions, but the question, the, like, like the question today is, first of all, a moats mean that you don't have to fight for business. Typically, that's the whole point of a moat. That's the same thing for dealerships with cars. But today, the question is, I have two questions. First of all, is is a physical location as big of a moat as before? for the very space of healthcare. And the reason why I say that is because Andrew Judema on, on um, a recent conference that he made, he clearly, clearly explains this, that he estimates that right now, with the current technology that we have right now, 65 to 70% of healthcare needs can be, tr can be catered to remotely remotely and by the way, this is going to, 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 to go up as we have um, you know, more and more ways to, to, to measure, to quantify our health. Uh, all of the tools that you find at the doctor's office, they are going to become more and more prevalent uh, and widespread. And so maybe that number really goes up to, you know, 80, 85% down the road if you, if you don't need to see a doctor because you can have an AI examine you and do an examination, right? We saw what the Apple Watch already does, which is absolutely extraordinary. Anyways, um, if you have an ECG in a watch, for example, that, that's that's kind of crazy. Uh, so that's that's the, the, the point number one. And point number two, um, conglomerates, you know, they are very large organizations that rely on efficiency because rent seeking, i.e. moats, protect from competition. And one of the questions that I ask is, do moat reliant organizations today, do they know how to fight for business? Right? How to how to actually um, go about competition the traditional way, trying to provide a a, a better, cheaper uh, product than the competition, and trying to iterate and innovate and always be one step ahead of a competition with a better, more innovative product. Do they know how to do that? Right? That's that's one of the questions that I ask. Uh, I, I don't I don't think they they are going to have the agility of any of the startups and the, the more established companies like HIMS in the in the digital healthcare space. I don't think they're going to have this, this agility. You have to be very agile to be able to add the latest innovation. I was talking on, on, on Twitter with, with some viewers of a channel, for example, about ChatGPT and the opportunity of HIMS to add the ChatGPT in the app and have a doctor in the pocket. Like that's something only a very agile company can do. Um, you know, if you if you're working in a, in a health conglomerate where decisions happen through committees and you have committees on committees, it's it gets it can take forever to to innovate and move. Um, and you know, and, and I'll briefly uh, tell you more about this. Um, your experience with the brand defines your loyalty to, to the brand. Did you have a good experience? You're going to develop an, an, an emotional attachment to the brand if you have a great experience with that brand. That's the whole field of experience design, which is something that people often forget. Is, you know, design is not about designing a cool logo, right? Design is about the whole thing. And so let me just tell you quickly, my last experience with a health system, which I'm, I'm still upset about 
today. Like I'm still upset about it. Uh, you know, like I was trying to get a a um, a checkup, like a, like a full physical, like a full physical checkup. And they are very easy to get, by the way. Uh, wh- but in my area, they're hard to get if you want to do if you want to get it done with a medical doctor. I didn't want to do it with, with with a nurse practitioner because I had seen plenty of nurse practitioners before. I wanted to have a real medical doctor give me a physical. And let me just tell you my journey, and you'll see why how my experience kind of defines my view of legacy healthcare versus consumer brand healthcare, like Hims. Right? It took four months to book an appointment in person with an actual medical doctor. NPs are much faster, but an actual medical doctor it took four months. The date of appointment was March 30th, 2020. I think it's obviously going to be cancelled, right? I watched the news, March 2020, everything was getting shut down. I think it's, it's obviously going to, to be cancelled. The evening prior to my appointment, I receive a call, right, from the health system telling me, Oh, you have to show up with a robot voice. Not very nice. Oh, you have to show up to your appointment tomorrow at 7.30. And they tell you, if you don't show up to your appointment, you are going to likely be charged a no-show fee. Right? That's like that's that's like how it works. And if you've dealt with traditional healthcare, you've probably received these calls the day before. Show up to your appointment or a no-show fee. And I show up, of course. And of course, when I arrive, everything is closed. Everything is closed, no communication, nothing, everything is closed, right? Uh, despite the fact that I received a call the day before. And so ever since I've quit even trying to see a, a MD for a physical in person, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to the nurse practitioners now. Um, but but the, the point is, imagine that experience. It's like, it's like you call the customer and then you are closed. Anyways, I'm not, I don't want to ramble about that, but I, I, I think, and I've seen... Through, through friends, I've seen through through uh, pe- people that are close to me that I know, right? The, the, some of the issues with a traditional healthcare system, like a common issue, for example, is getting that bill after seeing the doctor that you 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 think it's covered, but then they look in your insurance and they see, oh, you know, actually this little thing that they did was not covered, and you get a bill. And you, anyways, it's it's I don't want to ramble too much on that, but it's it's not as straightforward as getting on the app, waiting 24 hours to meet with a physician, hearing yes, you qualify for that prescription, no, you don't. And then moving on, that's that's a much better system. That's a system where I think you, you save time. That's just my opinion. That's a much better system. And I think Hims is crying, is trying to create that brand that people love. You know, that, that point, em- emotional attachment to the brand is very important. People have to rave about their experience. They have to be very happy, you know, kind of like Apple. And I, you know, I put jokingly here, or Oreo. Like, have you ever met an Oreo fan or a Reese's fan? They love that stuff, and they tell you, and they not, you know, you know what I mean. Anyways, and you see memes on the internet. This is the best thing ever. So, so you know, I've never seen memes on the internet. Oh, this is, you know, oh, um, whatever company conglomerate. I love you so much. You're the best deal ever. I've I've never really seen this. Uh, you need to have a healthcare brand that cre- creates an emotional connection, and that is what Hims is trying to do, right? I believe that if Hims nails that branding. Millennials and Gen Z can develop that emotional link with Hims early on, and they won't go anywhere else because they love the brand. Just like your Apple customer, you're going to keep buying Apple. Your Oreo lover, you're going to keep buying Oreos as a treat. You know, traditional healthcare is the leader right now, no doubt. It's the leader right now. But that's not the nature of the type of investing that I do. Right, the type of investing that I do is all about the future. It's all about it's all about thinking who's going to be the leader ten years from now, right? It's and, and I, I I think the leader ten years from now, the world the world is going to look very very different. And the companies that go after people who right now have very very minor issues, like Gen Z and millennials, um, then the company can evolve into a much more holistic healthcare company that people love. Hims right now, most of the business is done on on, on minor stuff because if you, if you're 22, you're gonna have minor issues. You're not gonna have big health issues in 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 general. You know, God forbid. But in general, you're not going to have major issues. So you know, they treat things like like, like PE again, not minor issue, acne, minor issue. 
you know, a little thinning of the air, minor issue, and not covered by insurance. And so the brand to treat this is 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 a is a, is a, is, is a fun brand. It's a brand that people are going to love. So I'll finish with this talking about the personality uh, of the brand. Him's brand personality is about induced demand. It's about creating new demand. It's about giving healthcare to people that may need it, but don't even know that it can be easily received, right? So, for example, Hims is going to have fewer chances, I believe. I may be wrong on this, but I believe they're going to have fewer chances, right? For example, earning the trust of a 60-year-old man who's used uh, to his urologist and has used this brand, for example, with this branded branded um, pill, Viagra, and has, has used it forever, right? I, I think they're going to have a harder time uh, going after after people who are used to this to this uh, to to the to the current system who are used to the leader, right? Just like someone who's driven a Ford truck their whole life and they're in their sixties or seventies, they're going to have a hard time thinking about I don't know buying a Rivian electric truck. You know, people 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 stay with their habits and that's okay. But I believe Hims is creating a new market for them. They're creating a new brand and a new market, and that brand stands for something different. And if I were to kind of define the brand of hymns, I would say it's a provocative, youthful, or at least in general, healthful and funny brand. That's how I would say. They are all about de-emphasizing the, tig- the stigma attached to getting healthcare. Uh, and again, um, and I'll, I'll finish with this, not all of the marketing of hymns, and this is kind of a, how the idea of this, this video came, because I was in a conversation on, on Twitter about the whether the brand is really taking your direction we like or not. Uh, not all of the marketing of him is going to re- resonate with the average viewer of my channel. Like like the average viewer of the channel, looking at the data, is between 29 and 45. So not all of the marketing is going gonna, is gonna to resonate, right? Some of the marketing is clearly targeted at uh, people who are in their early twen- 20s. But, that, you know, that's okay. That's what brands do. Mar- marketing, marketing, by definition, is about carving a niche for your company. So you're gonna be, going to be, by definition, segmenting the population. So you have a picture of you, you full you full customers of Hims, right? You can see the, the funniness of it, like, like you know, clearly Hims as, as a, a big um, ED business, well, you know, they go funny with with a with a ca- with, with a cacti, right? And oh, if you want to be funny too, this is this is I think my favorite that I've seen. This is very very funny here. Uh, uh, it's a this is their their air loss ad, and they're showing you this bonsai tree and trying to sell air loss product. I think I, I kind of think this is funny. Anyways, um, that's the brand. So the brand the brand is you know in that map. If you go back to that map, you can you can place hymns somewhere in that map. So Hims is trying trying to create a brand and I think their brand is clearly clearly targeting the the the, the future consumer of healthcare. And right now the consumer of healthcare of the future right now mostly needs to treat minor issues. But I believe this is a company that can, that can grow into something much bigger as the customer base ages and as the customer base gets used to the brand so anyways this was my only presentation uh on on brand i i, I hope you liked my, my my discussion of brand personality and brand for hymns versus legacy this is not investment advice this is just entertainment i hope you were entertained please like please subscribe appreciate all of you for watching thanks thanks for your time and i'll see you in the next video